On this day in 1989, Celtic won the Dubai Champions Cup and became the unofficial champions of Britain. The Dubai Champions Cup, originally known as the Dubai Super Cup, was a short-lived series of three challenge matches played in Dubai between the champions of Scotland and England from seasons 1986-87 to 1988-89. Celtic played in two of the three matches, facing Liverpool each time, while in the second match, Rangers played Everton. Celtic came into the match after the crushing disappointment of losing at home to Rangers for the first time in nine years, a result that effectively handed the title to the Ibrooks club. Joe Miller had missed a penalty and a Chris Morris equaliser was disallowed by a linesman who indicated his cross from right on the byline had followed a laws of physics defying S-shaped trajectory of going out of play, back into play, then an improbable change of direction and over Chris Wood's head to drop in at the far post. A great spot by the sharp-eyed official. Liverpool were in great form and following a 1-0 win over Norwich had cut the gap on leaders Arsenal to just two points. The Sunday Mirror of the 2nd of April 1989 reported Liverpool are now red-hot favourites to retain their first division crown. Alec Johnson reported in the Daily Record of the 4th of April Celtic are determined to do what seems beyond all English clubs beating the unstoppable men of Liverpool. When these two meet for the Champions Cup in Dubai's Al Nassar Stadium tonight, it will be a matter of pride as far as Billy McNeil's side are concerned. And Liverpool, unbeaten in 15 games, don't scare the Celts. As interest in the match reached fever pitch, Parkhead midfield star Paul McStay declared, Liverpool have that name about them and we really want to beat them. It would be a great result after the bitter disappointment of losing to Rangers on Saturday. Johnson went on to write, Liverpool's skipper Ronnie Whelan insists they will meet the Celtic challenge head on. We don't want to see Celtic going back as champions of Great Britain, he said. We are going out to win this and the manager wouldn't let us take it any other way. An injury hit Celtic, minus Roy Aitken and Tommy Burns, lined up in front of just 15,000 fans. Bonner, Morris, Rogan, McCahill, McCarthy, Grant, Miller, McStay, Coyne, McGee, Fulton. Subs, Andrews, Walker, Stark, Bailey. The match was played in a very competitive spirit, Alec Johnson writing in the Daily Record of the 5th of April, Anyone who thought these two giants might back away from a full-scale showdown couldn't have been more wrong. In that furious first half, it was the determined Celts, minus injured Roy Aitken and Tommy Burns, who really got the upper hand. Celtic took an early lead on 12 minutes through captain for the night, Mark McGee. The Glasgow Herald of the 5th of April 1989 reported, Not so efficient was the Liverpool defence. They were caught out early when a massive clearance from Bonner bounced over the head of Gary Gillespie and McGee found himself with acres of space. It was the type of chance which crops up on the training ground and McGee treated it as such, almost with contempt, as he strode on to send a low drive past Grobelar. Four minutes later, Tommy Coyne missed a good chance when he tried to lob the ball over Grobelar from close in but got too much on it and hit it high over the bar. Celtic could easily have been three ahead by half-time, the Glasgow Herald reporting. Tommy Coyne then missed a marvellous chance, and when the former Dundee striker then was pulled down blatantly by the goalkeeper, the referee refused to give a penalty. Liverpool changed things around at half-time and dominated the second half. Ken Rogers wrote in the Liverpool Echo of the 5th of April, Celtic deserved their interval lead, but Liverpool shuffled the pack to turn this game on its head to such an extent that the Scots were totally outplayed after the break. Ablett came off, Nicholl switched into the heart of the defence and Barnes reverted to his normal wide midfield role with Aldridge launched into the fray from the bench. Despite the pressure, Celtic held firm. The Glasgow Herald reported, That is when the Celtic defence, so often maligned, showed their worth. Time and again, Mick McCarthy and young Steve McCahill mopped up the danger as Liverpool powered forward, and when they were beaten, goalkeeper Pat Bonner was a magnificent last line. 
After making brilliant saves from Steve McMahon and Peter Beersley, Bonner was finally beaten with 17 minutes remaining. Rogers reported in the Liverpool Echo, Barnes created the chance with a magnificent centre into the box and Aldridge took control before beating the advancing keeper with a low shot to make it 1-1. The match went straight to a penalty shootout at the end of 90 minutes and Mick McCarthy, who had had a brilliant match, missed the first kick for Celtic. John Aldridge, Peter Grant, Peter Beardsley and Tommy Coyne all scored to make it 3-2 for Celtic before Pat Bonner made a magnificent save to keep out Liverpool's third from Steve McMahon. The advantage then swung Celtic's way, Andy Walker scoring their fourth to make it 3-2 before Steve Staunton hit the post for Liverpool. Billy Stark then kept his nerve to slam his spot kick well away to Grobelar's left, giving Celtic an unassailable 4-2 lead. Reds suffer from shakes as Scots win Battle of Britain, read the headline in the Liverpool Echo, and it was Mark McGee who picked up the impressive gold trophy to go with the unofficial title of Champions of Great Britain. The Dubai Champions Cup was never competed for again, as English clubs lost interest following their readmittance to UEFA competition in 1990. So the trophy remains at Celtic Park alongside other unofficial British Championship trophies in the shape of the British League Cup of 1902 and the Coronation Cup of 1953. It was probably meant to be. Liverpool met with the unspeakable tragedy at Hillsborough Stadium 11 days later and they lost the league in the final moments to Arsenal at Anfield, which didn't by then seem quite so important.